let me read to you a passage from the fifth chapter of St. Matthew's Gospel, verses 17 to 19. It's the Gospel for Wednesday of the tenth week in ordinary time. Jesus said, Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish them, but to fulfill them. I tell you the truth, until heaven and earth disappear, not the smallest letter, not the least stroke of a pen, will by any means disappear from the law until everything is accomplished. Anyone who breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever practices and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. That's from Matthew chapter 5, verses 17 to 19. What does it suggest to us? Well, you know, it is very obvious in the Gospels that a major point of dispute between our Lord and many of the leaders of the Jews was the way the law and the prophets were to be interpreted and put into practice. For example, one of the most distinctive features of the religion of the Hebrews was the Sabbath day. It is one of the Ten Commandments, and for instance a comparison of the religion of the chosen people of Israel with that of the nations of the time, like Egypt, Mesopotamia, Greece and Rome, shows the distinctiveness of the Sabbath even more. For instance, the commandments were given to Moses following the departure of the children of Israel from Egypt. But while there were many festival days and religious processions in Egypt, there was no weekly obligatory Sabbath. The Sabbath was a cardinal observance for the chosen people of, of God. But the issue was, how was it to be observed in its detail? For instance, our Lord was attacked for healing on the Sabbath. He did so even in the synagogue, no less. In debate on the point, he routed his opponents. But the opposition became even more implacable as the jealousy at his manifest authority increased. In their accusations about him, he was being set against the law of Moses. And so, our Lord, in his master discourse on the new law, which Matthew chapter 5 shows him promulgating on the mount, he addresses the relationship between his teaching and that of the law and the prophets. He says, he has not come to abolish the law or the prophets. On the contrary, they occupy the highest place in his revelation. And to this point, they had not been fulfilled. As our Lord, as our Lord makes clear elsewhere, the scribes and the Pharisees fussed over the washing of cups and plates while they neglected the weightier matter of the law, such as mercy and justice. The law and the prophets awaited fulfillment in all their detail, and it is he, Jesus Christ, who has come to fulfill them. Just as there is a letter to the Hebrews showing, for instance, that Jesus is the true High Priest. So, the Gospel of St. Matthew shows to the Hebrews that Jesus is the fulfillment of the Law and the Prophets. The question of the interpretation of the Law and the Prophets is and was a fundamental question. We read in the second book of Esdras, in the Old Testament, chapters 8 and 9, how the book of the Law was read to the people and interpreted to them. They then understood the law and acted according to it. Many of the details of the Mosaic law were a divinely guided interpretation of God's revelation intended, of course, to relate only to a certain stage in the history of God's people. The question of interpretation and discrimination continued on, and with it the question of how the Law and the Prophets were to be interpreted, how they were to be understood and fulfilled. You know, one author 
Jan Asman in his important work of God and Gods, published in 2008, points out that the biblical texts depicting a god of violence towards the abominations of paganism faded in the cultural memory of Judaism. He says that on page 126. Because, undoubtedly, they were more, they were more wisely interpreted. Well, how is God's revelation to be understood once it has been received? Jesus Christ re reveals himself to be the fullest, the truest, and the definitive interpretation of the Law and the Prophets. Not only is he its true and definitive interpretation, the light according to which the Law and the Prophets are to be read, even more importantly, he is also its fulfillment. The Law and the Prophets remained and would have remained unfulfilled were it not for Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ extended far beyond expectation the divine revelation granted to man to that point, and he far exceeded in his person all that the law and the prophets had demanded of sinful man. Their fulfillment in every respect lay in him, and for this reason, both at the beginning of his public ministry and at, his, at its end, during the Transfiguration, God the Father declared that here was his beloved Son, in whom he was well pleased. To understand the revelation God has given of himself, one must go to Jesus Christ and view both the entirety of the scriptures and the tradition in which they are situated in his unique and incomparable light. They point to him. He manifests their true meaning. Above all, he is their definitive fulfillment. Mankind now has the divinely given key to all that God has revealed of himself, a revelation which is expressed in scripture and in tradition. That key is the person of Jesus Christ. Let us go to him then and learn from him. Let us not only learn from him, but accept the invitation coming from him to be his friends. Friends who follow his way in their everyday life. For this, he gives us his grace. Where is he, our master, our friend, our Torah, our saviour and our God to be found? He is found in his body, the church, built by him on the rock of Peter and the Twelve. Let us go to him then, and let us never drift from him.